Hello and welcome to today's webinar uh, that is going to be about the WinStatic software Concrete Corbel. My name is uh, Fredrik Lagerström and I am the product owner for Prestress and I am sitting in the technical support for WinStatic and a little bit of fem design as well. Today we're using the GoToWebinar, so uh, you may ask questions and uh, in the uh, little window that you have on your screens. They will be answered after this presentation. There's an option for raising a hand, but uh, I will not be uh, looking at that uh, during this webinar, and I don't have any co-staff that can do either. So. Uh, ask your questions instead and uh, they will be answered that way. This presentation will be recorded and I will make it available on the Strusoft YouTube channel later today. Uh, so uh, this will be a rather short uh, webinar today. Um, mainly because uh, Concrete Corbel is uh, a rather small software. But we will take a look at the initial settings and then the input of data uh, for the user interface uh, and material, geometry, reinforcement details, and then the loads. We will do a calculation and take a look at the results. After this uh, PowerPoint presentation, I will have a live demo of the software and uh, I will finish off with the questions and answers. The questions and answers will not be part of the uh, YouTube uh, video, so uh, you may ask any questions you like and they will not be recorded. When we start the program, we will get the choice of selecting a code and uh, the national annex. And we have the uh, five common WinStatic national annexes, the British, Swedish, Danish, Finnish, and Norwegian annex. But you can also use standard Euro code. If you want to use the older national uh, codes, then it is possible to uh, get version 6.3 and uh, use those codes. But note that they will not be as updated as uh, the uh, latest in the 6.5 series. When we take a look at the user interface, um, the Main input is the menu bar, where we have the input, uh, calculate and watching results. And uh, when we look at the graphical overview of the uh, corbel, with the measurements and the loads, and uh, it is also when we have defined the uh, loads, it is possible to uh, select the different load cases to see the uh, eccentricity of the load and uh, the size of the load as well. The uh, corbel can be designed using concrete. <coughs> uh, so we define a concrete material and then the reinforcement material. As for the geometry, it's uh, these six input values. Uh, so basically the height of the uh, corbel, the height of uh, the uh, uh, plate where the uh, beam is uh, located on, and then um, the uh, 
basically the width and the size of the uh, column. When we take a look at the reinforcement details, uh, we define uh, a diameter for the main reinforcement uh, and we have to define a bending radius for it as well. And then we uh, define a diameter for the link reinforcement and the bending radius for that. We can also uh, enter a concrete cover and the uh, code will be uh, checked if the user wants to do such a sh check as well. But it is possible to uh, disable that check uh, if you are checking a older column that might not have the correct concrete cover according to the code or the current code. When we enter the loads, we enter a load combination, or as it says in this program, it says load case, um, where you define the uh, ultimate limit uh, forces. And then a vertical and a horizontal load. And uh, the distance from the uh, edge of the corbel to where the load is acting on the corbel, but also an eccentricity for the load. When we take a look at the results, you will be presented with uh, two parts. We have the left part where we can see the main reinforcement, and this will take the uh, tensile forces. Uh, and it will also display an anchorage length uh, or how much the bar needs to be anchored depending on uh, the size of the column. On the right hand side we can see the links and that is stirrups uh, acting further down here in the uh, uh, corbel to uh, connect the whole uh, stirrup basket. When we've done the calculation, we will also uh, be able to see the results. And uh, here we can see the different load combinations, uh, different required reinforcement. Uh, and this is uh, calculated as a force here. And uh, yeah, we can see different values for uh, different parameters. And then further down here, we can see that we need uh, the reinforcement, basically one leg of diameter 16 here. Um, it's uh, the required reinforcement area in square millimeters. Uh, the anchorage length as shown in the uh, previous picture and then how many number of cuts per reinforcement layer. And we can also see the number of links uh, that we need. When it comes to the uh, calculation, the uh, there is also well possible to check uh, compression zone uh, in the concrete. So the uh, struts for the uh, compression is uh, okay, and that there's uh, no problem with the uh, uh, compressive failure. So now I will switch over to uh, the program. And the software can be opened using the uh, WinStatic launcher. 
we do not have any help video for this uh, Corbel software, um, but uh, we will be able to uh, enter all these values anyway. And uh, if you want to uh, look back and basically have a help video, we can uh, use this video on the YouTube channel for that. Here, I will select the uh, standard Eurocode Annex. And we will be presented with this overview uh, and this schematic of the uh, uh, Corbel. What we do is basically go into the input. Uh, there is an option to enter a title and this is information that you can fill in and it will be shown on the printout. So a typo, a description of the project, uh, user signature, uh, and if you want to have a comment as well. The material is uh, very similar to uh, any other Winsatic software. So here I can go in and select a strength class for the concrete and also uh, exposure class and life class. If there are any uh, different settings uh, in use for the uh, specific uh, national codes, then uh, it, they will be shown here as well. So for instance, in the latest uh, national annex for Sweden, there's an option to uh, enter the amount of uh, Portland cement and uh, then the concrete cover will be uh, decided on the uh, amount there as well. Down here, we have uh, the possibility to uh, uh, enter the uh, reinforcement, either a user defined or uh, if it is a normal uh, predefined uh, reinforcement. When we take a look at the geometry, uh, this software will only work if uh, there actually is, uh, and I think the angle here, uh, uh, alpha between the uh, support and the bottom here, it needs to be uh, a certain angle. So. It's, uh, it might not work if you have a very tall corbel, but you need to have a, uh, an inclin a rather nice inclination of the uh, compressive strut. So I will enter some values for the uh, uh, corbel. And as we could see when I was entering it, uh, the uh, window here actually changed depending on uh, the uh, values that I entered. So uh, we can see that it basically looks okay. After the geometry, uh, I will enter the reinforcement. I will use the default reinforcement, diameter 16 for the main reinforcement and uh, diameter 8 for the uh, stirrups. I can uh, enter a lower concrete cover, for instance. And uh, up here in the top left corner, it says check input against code. And that is the uh, concrete cover, for instance. <clears throat> And then I can enter the loads. And uh, here I will define 
two different load combinations. I will enter loads. And I will enter no eccentricity for this one. Uh, note that the uh, program says that the value cannot exceed uh, the width divided by two. So the load cannot be placed outside of the uh, corbel, but it actually needs to uh, act on the corbel. As for load combination two, I will enter a slightly higher load, but the lower horizontal load. And here it is now possible in the top left corner to select the load combination and basically see graphically uh, the, uh, uh, how the load is acting. And after this, I will do a calculation and I will get the uh, number of uh, reinforcement as we can see here. And depending on the input, I will get uh, different values. And uh, different requirements, it might be uh, depending on the uh, different load cases here or load combinations, uh, but they were quite similar. So the reinforcement will actually be uh, the same for both of them. When we take a look at the results, we can see the uh, information here uh, and the uh, reinforcement force is uh, basically the force in the main reinforcement bar here. So with a higher uh, vertical load, uh, this will of course increase uh, depending on the uh, geometry, but also if you have a tensile force acting outwards, it will basically just increase the uh, uh, reinforcement bar here as well. The data for the compression zone, uh, the uh, compression stress is lower than the design stress. So both of these load combinations are okay as well. And then it's possible to uh, uh, select uh, just a basic layout. You can select a font that you want to use. And I will be able to print the uh, in data and the result here. So uh, it is not that uh, much of a, uh, well, more features. There are no exports of this uh, reinforcement, for instance, to uh, other software. Uh, but uh, there might be uh, an update in the uh, future of uh, exporting things as well. We might see when uh, that update comes though. In the latest version, we also have updated the help file. So it uh, corresponds with uh, all the added features of uh, Concrete Corbel since the uh, beginning. And uh, here it is possible to uh, look at the uh, different calculations and the calculation model used. And there's also 
uh, uh, one showing the uh, limitation that one might occur and that is that the uh, uh, the geometry of the um, corbel needs to be uh, according to this restriction. And this was the uh, presentation. If you want to yeah, try out yourself, if you don't have the uh, program yet, uh, you may apply for a free trial using our uh, website and go to the Winstatic and then there's a button for uh, get a free trial. And this concludes the uh, webinar series for uh, 2022. I will wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and I will see you next year in a new set of webinar series. Thank you.